On this research review, we're going to take a look at a really interesting study that I heard about on the Tim Ferriss Show podcast with Dr. Andrew Huberman. Uh, they kind of touched on it. Uh, Dr. Huberman had posted several things on it before, but the title of it is called A Potent Physiological Method to Magnify and Sustain Soleus Oxidative Metabolism Improves a Glucose and Lipid regulation. So that's a lot, uh, but ultimately that's what we're going to break it down. First, let's start off with what the soleus is. This is one of the forgotten calf muscles, uh, typically focused on uh, its work with standing, uh, walking, postural control, ends up being about a percentage of your body weight when you really break it down. Uh, this muscle uh, helps contribute to your Achilles tendon, comes in along with your gastroc, which is the calf muscle that everybody sees, but it lies underneath it. The other thing that makes the soleus different from the gastroc is the soleus does not cross the knee joint like the gastroc does. So it is also a muscle that gets forgotten when it comes to foam rolling and stretching. So what they did in looking in this study is they did a uh, soleus quote-unquote push-up and really it seems like it was doing something pretty impressive to how your body responds for again the muscle itself being really a small amount of your body weight and really something that you can a muscle you can contract over and over again and not have a high level of fatigue and so they saw this when it was isolated while sitting and it was in both fit and unfit individuals as they defined them. So what they found is it was actually able to lower blood glucose with a single session of soleus contractions by about 50%. Um, and that rivals pretty much any exercise or prescription out there. And again, when we're talking about a soleus push-up, which they were really... Um, looking at is you're sitting there and basically you're doing a seated calf raise but you're doing it getting a good contraction lowering it back down so it's not necessarily just like fidgeting which can also help uh increase caloric use but it's more of a true like push up where you're going through holding it for a second at the top lowering back down and just going through kind of a cyclical motion in that regard but again not just bouncing your knees they found that it was using energy stores from all around the body, not just local muscle glycogen. Um, this was seen because um, in the biopsies they did that showed minimal glycogen use. And really what they were showing is it can raise uh, local oxidative metabolism to high levels for hours. So really that muscle, once you get going, is going to go through that oxidative uh, metabolism, which is again going to focus on more burning some of the lipid um, and fat within your body to use that versus just local muscle glycogen, which makes it kind of unique because when we do use a lot of our other muscles, it is using that those glycogen stores for energy, uh, rightfully so, because you are using that muscle, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. So they tested three hours worth of contractions. Um, these were controlled semi-max contractions, like I said, not just fidgeting. Three hours is a lot. Um, that is one that this is going to require some further studying to see what you see um, with different options. But that also goes and looks at how non-fatiguing this motion is because it will allow you to go and do three hours in this instance of those type of contractions. So what does this ultimately mean to you trying to apply it? Not a replacement, but could be another tool to help you improve your metabolism. If you can work on doing those contractions throughout your day, maybe not three hours straight, but just doing those throughout your day if you are working at a desk job where you can just get into a rhythm of getting those contractions to go, it could be a very powerful thing that could help you in controlling some of your blood glucose and lipid levels and really be something for whether you're trying to maintain where you're at, maybe help jumpstart you a little bit, combine these with some exercise snacks, which we've talked about before in a previous research review where you're trying to get up throughout the day, get moving, uh, just small little bouts to just basically get heart rate up, get everything mobilized uh, within your body. That could also be really beneficial. As an aside, one thing that Tim Ferriss, not necessarily in the research, but talked about in his 4-Hour Body book, which we'll link that into the show notes, is how he would do some version of some push-ups, maybe some air squats, some other things, kind of 30 minutes prior to a meal, 
or 30 minutes and then again 30 minutes after to really help just trigger some of the processes within the body to really utilize that fuel you're taking in and hopefully have less of it and then go get stored away as unwanted body fat or just have those excess uh, calories within your diet so really this is kind of a unique interesting study to look at a muscle again that really nobody pays attention to uh, unless it's causing you problems but could really help benefit you in terms of getting you to help control a lot of these things with minimal effort um, and a high rate of return so i will have everything in the show notes so you can take a look at that but we appreciate you listening to this and we'll catch you on the next one